you go guys, there's a little bit of a dance routine. Should really just call it loosening up before sitting at long hours at the desk. Hello everyone, my name is Oli Mori and welcome to Seizure Art. So today we're going to be working on the shape of the week. So here's our shape. I don't know what to really make of this so far. It looks like something that you could fly, like... Like it looks like a sort of bird or maybe a maybe a spacecraft or something. I don't know. We'll find out when we start fiddling around with it on Clip Studio. The Shape of the Week challenge is uh, created by Beast Rec. Um, if you don't know who he is, I'll, I'll create a link in the description below. Um, he's a really good artist, so go check him out. So yeah, let's get started and start brainstorming our shape. Hey everyone, so I'm going to be doing something different today. I'm going to be talking a little bit at a time throughout this time lapse. My voice is going to go on and off throughout the entire thing, so I'm just going to try to explain as best I can the my process on Clip Studio. So first off, I was trying to, like, this was really hard. I was trying to rotate the shape around and trying to figure out, like, trying to make it into a spaceship with wings or something. Um, I was heavily influenced by uh, Dragon Ball Z because I was watching it at the time. And um, I, it was actually Dragon Ball GT when they were flying in space. And um, then I just tried again. And I tried to turn it into like a, a person or an assassin or so someone with a hood. The shapes weren't turning out. The perspective was all wrong, and I just I wasn't I wasn't feeling it. Really fun to fiddle around with the the brushes. I always use uh, the the already made brushes in Clip Studio because I haven't figured out how to make my own yet. <laughs> Um, and for the beginner sketch, uh, I use a, a thick brush just to try and figure out what's going to be inside the shape. Uh, it saves me a lot of time and energy from sketching with a small size brush per se. It's like it saves me from my wrist being sore like really early. Anyways, I found out what was going to be inside the shape at last. <laughs> so um, I began with a female mecha robot with wings, and then it sort of progressed to a wasp slash bee type robot. I hope I sketched it out right and it uh, looks like it later. But for now I'm working on uh, a lot of layers. The, the first stage I begin with what was going to be inside the shape, so sort of what the silhouette looks like. Uh, that's why I use a thick brush. Then, um, then I lower the opacity down and create a new layer over the top of that. Now, this layer decides where everything's going to go. I, I sketch out the, a finer brush where all the metal parts are and all the mechanical. So yeah, I drew inspiration from like a like a bee or a wasp. So this sort of turned out to be like a like a insect robot wasp type of. Thing. So right now we're on the final layer. Um, we don't create any more after this one. Uh, this line art will, this final line art will decide the, the fate of this drawing, so to speak.
when drawing robots, I'm not uh, particularly good at drawing robots per se, but like when you get really technical, it sort of gets mushed up and confusing. Um, so I try not to think about all the the inner workings of the robot. I try to like create co as like cogs and wheels, but it's sort of important to make sure that they they look like they make sense. They don't have to make sense in your mind, but they, it just sort of has to look like they make sense in a way. I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah, I, it's um, I put some fur on the on the bee robot so that it will lo look like it was a bee. <laughs> so the line art is almost done with the wings. I kind of I kind of like the wings a lot. Um, they, they were a lot of fun to do. I, I thought they made the try and make them like blades. So the next step I did was fill in the whole thing with a base color, or usually it's just the color that you're going to see the most in. Um, for this one, it was yellow because it was a bee. Uh, now I'm filling up the complex mechanicry. Um, a little trick you can do, make it look like there's a whole bunch of inner metal workings. Just draw a bit of like cogs and wheels and then fill the rest in with black so that it looks like there's more to it inside but it's just hiding in shadow. <laughs> I drew on, was it, like barcodes on like plates, on a number of the plates so that it's like each one is like separate and unique to to the like they have to like it's like an IKEA like when you're trying to assemble it each one has a barcode I'm trying to I'm trying to contrast it with like the stripes of the bees but the black and yellow stripes of the bees and I'm trying to, yeah, play that out in the, the robot here. Yeah, I'm, I'm colouring in inner workings, the initial workings of the robot. And I'm only going to work with the, the base colour and the highlights. I'm not going to put any shadows in there because this actually, I lied before, I, this actually did take a while. It felt shorter than it was. Um, I liked it, it looked good uh, either way, I think. I also thought like if I add too much detail, if I added like highlights and shadows, it would probably look messy with all the machinery. Yeah, you can see all the mechanics inside looked um, a little bit scrambled. Yeah, I'm just adding the highlights uh, on the wasp, on the bee, I don't know, it's like a hybrid, like a bee wasp sort of thing, I'm not quite sure. So I made with the, the different brush. I put, I put a denser brush for the, the inner workings, the highlights on the inner working sort of mechanics. I don't know what pr to professionally call them, um, so I'm just sort of making up as I go along. I'm putting the the labels in properly because um, I didn't do that last night last time and uh, people didn't really get it yeah but overall this was a really fun experience way different than the last time I think the last time I, it was a fluke but um, this one was really challenged my imagination or lack thereof 
So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I hope you had fun. I, I certainly did. And I hope I was able to explain as much as possible when working in a clip studio. If you want to know anything else, uh, just uh, leave your questions in the comments down below. So yeah, that was, that was the shape of the week. Keep drawing, keep creating, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Hey everyone, thanks again for watching The Shape of the Week. It's always fun to do these types of videos with you guys. If you like this video, I've got a tons more on my YouTube channel, so please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you know when my videos are out. My videos are sort of inconsistent right now, so with the release of them. So expect videos just randomly pop up uh, every week or so. Uh, also please go check out my other social medias, there's something different for each one. So, And we also have a donations link, so if you're feeling generous please donate any amount, high or small would be greatly appreciated. And all donations will go supporting this channel. Uh, that's it for me for now, I'm gonna buzz off uh, to the next video. Bye!